Daddy eats lots. Daddy eats lots. Daddy eats lots. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenge of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane, and joining me this evening are Ryan and Maddie. Firstly, gents, how was the weekend? It's a bad Kano. Evening, Ryan. We've um, just come back from three nights down um, well, just past the Gold Coast, a place called Kingscliff, which is just below Coolangatta Airport. Um, nice little beach resort there. So, yeah, the, the kids had finished school. So we thought we'd duck down there with another family um, that has some kids around the same age as our kids. So a bit of R&R before the, uh, the hectic week that is going to be this week in the lead-up to the big day. Well, that is very topical about we're going to talk about this evening, Matthew. But uh, before that, Ryan, how's your weekend? Yeah, good. Quite a low-key weekend this weekend. We, um, we're ahead of the Christmas festivities and planning and shopping and all that jazz. So, yeah, we found ourselves with a bit of time. Had a few uh, Christmas end-of-year bevies on Friday with your fine self there, Kane. And um, we danced around the street of Melbourne. And then, yeah, Saturday and Sunday have been just a bit of life admin and some other bits and pieces. That is very true. We did we did dance up a storm on Friday evening at a silent disco. Well, um, my better half asked me if I, I I did dance around. I just kind of played it down. I, I just a little bit here and there. I wasn't I wasn't really that into it. I don't think. No, no, you got some center stage moments there. I thought you did quite well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Uh, what we are, we're going to talk about this evening is school holidays and what kids get up to on school holidays these days compared to maybe what we did back when we were a wee bit younger. But before that, I do have a dad joke. I had my uh, my family around today for early Christmas and we cracked some bonbons and this is courtesy of one of the bonbons. So guys, what do you call a row of men waiting for a haircut? No idea. Uh, Barber? Oh, not bad. Barbecue. I like the thought which went into it. A barbecue. A row of men waiting for a haircut. A barbecue. Thanks, Christmas Crackers. The home of dad jokes. So school holidays. Uh, Maddie, your girls are now off. And obviously, you know, little fella doesn't go to uh, <laughs> anything yet, being uh, a, a wee little band. Uh, when did they knock off? Yeah, right. So my... Eldest Mia finished on this Sunday, um, so she's been off for for a week and a bit. And the the middle one, Eloise, finished is sorry finished her kindergarten last week, um, and we'll throw in her into daycare a couple of days this week. But that's pretty much it. So sixth of December for us, um, and they're not back until the the week of Australia Day. Um, so I think the 29th of January. So quite a Quite a long break, which it always is in a summer holiday. So we'll be, um, we've uh, done the pre planning of the calendars to sort of organise where everyone needs to be because you just need to do that with such a long break. I was going to say, have you organised your whiteboard? Like you have mentioned before, you have your whiteboard of your activities from you know, dawn to dusk and you know, dawn in you know, <laughs> where you are is half past four. Uh, so you, have you laid that out yet for tomorrow? Um, not as yet, no, because it's still a work week for me this week. Uh, but next um, or post Christmas, when I do have the girls for some periods there, I will certainly be laying out the uh, the whiteboard from dawn to dusk. Yeah, now there's two aspects of what we can discuss tonight around school holidays. One is probably when you're really little, um, and then you know when we're probably slightly older and maybe finished uh, high school, which you know a lot of kids have just got their ATARs in the last week, uh, or at least they have down here in Melbourne, and they're kind of panicking about you know, what score they got and what they're going to do next year. So maybe we'll touch on both. Uh, I don't think there was that much around when we were really little. I, I don't recall really doing much apart from maybe going to the Plaster Fun House when I was in primary school. Did, did either of you even know what the Plaster Fun House is? Never heard of it. <laughs> So well, this is, you know, here we go. The Plaster Fun House for people who are of my vintage, and I'm, I'm 40, there was a Plaster Fun House out in Croydon. There was a couple of others around uh, Melbourne. There's one currently, I think, in Bendigo. So a Plaster Fun House, you'd literally just get little fired bits of ceramic and you'd paint them with paint. And you could go there for like sort of two hours and spend like 
four bucks on a couple bits of plaster and literally just paint them and then take them home and then, you know, they go in your glory box for a couple of years and then someone turns them out because they just like look like junk. But I think this is the kind of shit you get from Kmart these days. Well, is this the pre Sega Nintendo? This is what the kids used to do before that? Yeah, I think we had four TV channels, no, no computer games. We might have been on the Atari 2600 where you could play a bit of stick figure double dragon and maybe a bit of Pac-Man if you're lucky. So we had to you know, use our imagination and you know hit balls against fences with sticks and you know paint plaster and shit like that. Um, when you guys were really little, did you go? Is there anything which stands out that you did which you enjoy or remember when you were kind of on school holidays? Because that's twelve weeks of you know ten or twelve weeks of not much going on. Yeah, it's a long time, um, and I've even got to think a fair way back, and I'm not your vintage, but that was the uh, the time where video games were around, so good old Mario Kart on the Nintendo 64, and then when I was old enough, GoldenEye, um, but we, uh, we probably spent a fair bit of time, we lived not too far from like a nature reserve. Uh, when I was growing up in Western Sydney there. So we actually spent a fair bit of time in school holidays um, riding through there and going through lakes and building, I guess, cubby houses and that sort of stuff. So I do remember that quite fondly. Um, And we would always used to play, I remember early when we were younger, like occasionally we had, we went away for like, um, we had those school activities more so in the two week school holidays where you go away for like two weeks or something like that. Oh, not two weeks, where you're busy during the day, like you might have a fun day and painting and movies or bowling or something. Uh, but then when we got a little bit older, because we lived near this yeah, nature reserve and we could kind of build forts and whatnot, we um, got right into the James Bond saga and played plenty of spies and. All those kind of fun things, which I remember quite fondly, actually, now that we're talking about it. Yeah, now that you actually mentioned that, it jogs my memory as well. We had a creek, and I think it, it's very generous calling this particular waterway a creek. It was not much much more than a trickle, to be honest, that Dandenong Creek, and we'd spend time kind of hanging around there as well and kind of playing around in the grassland and, and uh, the woods or the forest or the jungle or whatever we pretended it was around then, but... Yeah, those sort of times of just kind of hanging out and just kind of what you'd call most killing time now, but just making stuff up were, were unreal as a kid. Um, but Mario Kart, who did you play as? Oh, good question. Uh, Yoshi. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Yoshi was a good one. Oh, I'll play that. If he wasn't there, second fiddle was um, Luigi, if somebody snuck in and got Yoshi before me. Uh, so that, I vaguely remember, was that uh, I'm a Luigi, I'm a going to win? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Describe it of that game as well. What about you, Maddie? You were out in Garfield. Was got much going on around then? Yeah, so we were, um, I guess we were like sort of broken up into two, which is primary school and high school, because we, as you mentioned, we lived in Garfield, which for anybody who doesn't know where that is, it's been an hour east of Melbourne. We had 24 acres of bushland. So we were sort of, our friends were probably, you know, 20 minutes away from us driving, so they weren't really that close. So me and my brother used to do pretty much the same, it sounds like, what you guys used to do, was just sort of run around and, you know, pretend we're in the army or, you know, you know, shooting games and that kind of stuff around the bush and just sort of building different structures and things like that. But I do remember when we, um, Dad made us do some jobs, and in return, we ended up getting a mega drive and sort of things changed. Then we spent a lot more time inside than, I guess, Mum and Dad would have liked, but we were um, yeah, on the on the Mega Drive for quite a quite a bit of time in the school holidays. The Mega Drive. So you were a big Sonic fan. Sonic was Sonic no, the Hedgehog was built in, in the Mega Drive. No, we had those little sixteen bit cartridges that you'd have to put in the top. Um, but yeah, no, we were big Sonic fans. But the Streets of Rage is a really good one. That oh was, yeah, quite a game and. Uh, I think this game called Lethal Enforcer. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it was also an arcade game where you'd have a gun, like as a as an extension to the uh, the controller, and you'd shoot the screen, and that was that was awesome. It would have been a bit like was Goldeneye a bit like that as well, Ryan? Did you have the gun? You, did you have the actual physical gun for Goldeneye, or was it still just like you know A B B toggle 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 up the top? Yeah, no, it was the toggle for Goldeneye. But um, I did like Time Crisis whenever we went to an arcade, oh, yeah. which had a uh, had the gun there and I never finished it and I was at a Christmas party like 
probably two, three years ago. So well, in, well into the, you know, the twenties and um, they had some arcade stuff there and never finished the uh, time crisis two, I think it was. And at this party, because it was a party, um, you didn't have to keep paying money. <laughs> so literally you just kept going for it. However, you know, long you wanted to. And, uh, yeah, finally finished it at like 26 or 27 <laughs> years of age. <laughs> Everyone was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm determined to finish this game. I spent so much money on it when I was a kid. Ah, uh, that's gold. That's the old terminology. So you, you finally, after 27 years, you clocked it. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Those good old, good old days where you just, you'd, we, because we used to hire, I had my, my, my um, mate married my sister oh, and, right. you know, we've told that story before. Um, all we used to do, we talked about it today, like we playing mini golf out the back, and you know, we both used to work at a golf range for five bucks at five bucks an hour back when we were sort of thirteen. And we'd take that five bucks and we'd buy back then you could just you know buy a bottle of Diet Coke and you could hire a computer game. So we'd go up and hire a computer game for a week, get a bottle of Coke, and then just you know try to clock the game before we had to take the game back. It's just a <laughs> different different world. Life was so simple back then, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I don't, I, you know, honestly, I'm saying it's Coke. It was probably, you know, that, you know, sars, that cheap sars barely used to getting um, glass bottles from the servos. Like AC Cola. Yeah, AC, yeah, AC, yeah. AC Cola, that's right. I think RC, RC Cola was about what, what we used to call it. Um, we're out of high school. Like, I, I see kids do all sorts of crazy shit when they finish high school now. Like, you know, schoolies was never really a thing and wasn't a thing when I when I finished up. Uh, certainly not. But what did you guys do when you were sort of 14, 15 or moving towards even 17, 18 when you actually got towards finishing school? I didn't I didn't really have a part-time job until I sort of finished school. And that's going to sound a bit like, oh, my mum and dad pay for everything. But I think because of where we lived, um, you know, the nearest supermarket to get a job there was too far away. The closest thing we had was Gumbaya Park, and I put my name down there a few times, but never sort of got a gig there. But um, in the school holidays, yeah, in, in high school, that was when it sort of changed to, you know, I was starting to make, had friends from high school, and they sort of lived in the suburbs. That so was more going to the movies, getting the train into town. Danny North Plaza was where we used to go for a bit because Town Gay didn't have movies. Um, and that was, yeah, that was sort of, I remember doing that the first time thinking, oh, this is a bit, you know, a bit scary getting the train into, into town and walking the streets of Dan to get to the cinemas. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> you know, it would be now, yeah. Um, I don't know, these kids these days, I think they, maybe it's just because of where I grew up, but, you know, they're just so much more confident doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I reckon when you, when you look at kids these days just walking around town, when you think they, you know, should you, you're doing something else, you, you kind of wonder, how old are you? Like, you know, should you be your parents know you're out? But maybe that's just because I'm an old guy now and I look at everybody and think they're young. Well, it's the same. We're in the city on Friday night, right? And there's just a lot of sort of, you know, what I'd call sort of, you know, well, they were teenagers, but not even sort of late teenagers kind of just roaming around. It was just, I can't remember going into the city when I was young. And if I did, it would have been like maybe once a year, but they were just everywhere. An epidemic. Yeah. I think um, there, there was plenty, actually. Uh, we weren't out overly late. We just kind of started early. So it's not like we were rolling around at 1 a.m. and there were plenty of teenagers. Um, for anyone listening out there thinking that, oh, Melbourne's full of a bunch of 15-year-olds at 1 a.m. Um, I, I, think, I think now because it's so much more connected, you don't feel like really – all of them have phones at the end of the day. So they're a phone call away from a friend or from a um, from the police, from their parents or whatnot. Mm. Because, yeah, so when about, I was 14 when we moved from Sydney to Perth. So around that 15, 16. So, yeah, working a bit part-time in the school holidays to get a little bit of money. But then, yeah, I remember we would go to the beach um, which is obviously you do that in Perth because there's stunning beaches over in Western Australia. But we'd spend we'd spend days at the beach. We would catch the train. We lived about forty k's out of Perth, um, which is about a bit under an hour train ride straight into the city. And we would catch the train into the city and wander Perth CBD for the for the day as fifteen year olds. Um, 
so I think, yeah, it, it as technology got better, I think people got a lot more confident to do it. Um, I remember my mum said something really interesting one school holidays or something where me and two other friends were just walking around and, you know, a couple of 15-year-old kids thinking you're all cool. We probably had our shorts halfway down our ass or whatever was the trend <laughs> back then. I don't know if you guys ever had that. But, um R and B gangster thingy that went that went through when I was at school, but um, and then yeah, she drove past and we're like, oh, what are these kids up to? Type thing, and then she doubled back and saw that it was me and two of my really good friends, and we were just walking between each other's houses. I think one of them, one of our friends, had a pool table or something like that, so we we're going to go play some pool, and that for her was like a real big thing of oh, actually, that's my kids and I know them and not all 15 year olds walking the streets or whatever are bad. So I think that was really interesting to hear that from her. And then when we finished school, Leavers was a thing. So we went down to Bustleton uh, or Dunsborough, which is about two, two and a half hours out of Perth. Um, and we stayed there for about a week and had our uh, leaving party, I suppose, or Leavers as it was. Um, and then, but yeah, then pretty much it was off to work for that school holidays, getting ready to, uh, well, actually in my case, getting off to work to get a little bit of money before moving to Canberra to go and spend a bit of time with the Air Force. Now, I think you make a really good point there about phones and technology and, you know, and those sort of things connecting people where you used to have to literally call a landline. So you'd go to a Telstra payphone and call someone's landline and hope they were there mobile phones and the ability to kind of message somebody be it if you're in trouble or if you need something or just to connect i think it's a really good point of actually uh enabling kids to kind of at least seem a lot more independent than i certainly was when i was that age yeah i think the other thing as well is um if you look at all the like if you think of a 16 year old roaming around the city with their friends type thing um I can't remember oh, 16, 17. I mean, my parents grew up in country sort of towns or whatever, but pretty comfortable to sneak into the pub. Uh, whereas, you know, now if you think of 16 year olds roaming around in the city, you go into any bars, they've got bouncers left, right, and center. Most of them, they actually scan your driver's license into the computer thing. So you can also probably know that your kids aren't getting up to too much mischief um, if they're roaming around the city, I guess. And you can, as you said, Kane, contact them straight away with a mobile. Or yeah. track them if you're if you're smart enough to set that up. <laughs> yeah, that'll be you. That'll be you in a handful of years, won't it, Maddie? When are when are the girls uh, angling for mobile phones? Has that conversation already started? It has with me. Oh, yeah, she was hoping to get one. Next year, but we could have put a full stop on that for a few years at least. Um, probably high school, but they'll have yeah, they'll have GPS tracking devices until they're at least in their forties or fifties, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what's the, what is the plan for the rest of uh, the break, Matty? You've got you got to juggle well, really three until what the end of January. Yeah, well, thankfully Sam will go all next week, which is great. And then he has two weeks off. So he, he sort it. He'll go back to daycare um, come the new year. Eloise starts kinder, I think, the same time Mia does. So it's a full month with those two little rascals. Um, and we'll just split it out. So obviously, Kim will be working. I'll be working. We'll be just sort of juggle it around us. His parents live pretty close by, so I'll have them for a day. Um, and her sister has Mondays off as well, so we'll utilise that. Um, and my mum and dad at the towards the end of January as well. So family for us um, comes into play a lot around school holidays. We sort of rely on the good grace of them to sort of look after the kids as well a bit, which is um, they always seem to come to the party. So in terms of – and we'll just fill up those random days with different activities, I guess. I'm looking – at making a sequel to the little film I made with the girls last year um, on the iPhone. So watch this space for that. Um, well, that was Frozen last year. So are you going with Frozen 2 now that Frozen 2's out? 
Um, it was kind of frozen. I don't want to get too much witchy. away, but have you written yeah, the script? It was which more more witchy, you... but I'll, I'll get the storyboards happening next week or a week after that. Yeah. You, yeah, shop the script around to various publishing houses and studios. Yeah, look, Warner Brothers are in in talks, so we'll just see what comes out of that. But, um, we're holding auditions. In, in uh, Aaron, as well, guys. Aaron Sorkin writing this script. <laughs> I've got Steven Sonnenberg on, on board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the Wasn't release. Isn't it um, number one movie in the whole country, Frozen 2? Oh, I'm sure yeah. that's what pe- plenty of people oh, will be spending a bit of to kids' be, school yeah. holidays time doing. Have you girls yes. seen it, Maddie? We did, yeah. We saw it opening weekend and, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I loved it. I, I, I said to Kim, you know, I've got a bit of a movie buff and I'd like to go back and see it again, but I think it'd be a bit weird if I went by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, like that, that, comes out on DVD. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Jen, I think that's probably yeah, that's maybe nice. maybe a good place to wrap it up for this week. Uh, remember to subscribe to Daddy It's Last on iTunes if you haven't done already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Hopefully, it's as good as Frozen Two. Tell you much about the podcast, especially for the guys. Most of all, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week for another episode, or should I say serving, of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.